Hello everyone, welcome back to Physical Channel. And in this lecture, we will deal with a different topic of the physics, that is optical physics. And uh, in this lecture, we are dealing with the laser. So, what do you mean by laser? What are the different types of the lasers? What are the different characteristics of the laser? And within that, we are seeing one particular, or we will discuss one particular type of laser, that is a gaseous type laser, and which is a helium ion laser. So, first of all. We have to understand what we mean by the laser. So we know that the long form of the laser is nothing but the light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So this is the long form of the laser. So L for light, A for amplification, S for stimulation, E for emission, R for radiation. So this is the long form of the laser. So why laser are distinguished from the ordinary light? We know that ordinary light is nothing but our tube light or whatever the light which coming from the source okay so what is the difference between the ordinary light and laser light so ordinary light is a all directional light that means it emits source emits lights in all direction but in laser the light direction is the only one direction also the normal ordinary light is not monochromatic light it consists of different colors so if it is white light then it consists of a seven color and we know that what are the seven colors according to the spectrum that is the colors from red to violet now the ordinary light is not highly directional that means they are not highly directional sources but the laser light are the highly directional sources after that the highly intense that means the ordinary light is very less intense as compared to the laser light in, uh, as compared to laser light laser light is a highly intense it will cover the long distance and uh, due to its direct directionality property so that is why the laser light is distinguished from the ordinary light so this is all about the introduction of the laser and uh, it is a optical device that means uh, uh, it uh, gives output in the form of light having a different colors and it is a monochromatic coherent highly directional and intense light so what are the characteristics of the laser light there are different characteristics of the laser light so first characteristic is a coherent we know that coherence phenomena so according to coherence phenomena there are two types of the coherence first one is a spatial coherence and second one is a temporal coherence so laser light shows both type of coherence that means the laser light is a highly coherent light now the second property is a monochromatic the word indicate that mono means single and chromatic means color that means the laser light consists of only one color that means if we are considering the helium neon laser then the color of the helium neon laser is a red color having wavelength 63 to 8 angstrom suppose we are considering argon laser then the color of the argon laser is nothing but the green and which is used in a medical application so this is the characteristics of the laser that is a monochromaticity now the next characteristics is the highly directional so we know that the laser light covers high distance that means it is a highly directional it goes along in only one direction or it is in the bundle of photons are in the same direction so the laser light is a highly directional after that highly intense so laser light is also highly intense as compared to ordinary light sources the laser light is a highly intense source so these are the four main characteristics of the laser light okay and these characteristics will not show by the ordinary sources it shows but in very little quantity in laser it will shows in very strong quantity so these are the different characteristics of the laser light now there are different types of the lasers we know that there are different types of laser according to their construction so if you are using a different materials in a construction of laser light then we can give the name according to their construction for example if we consider the solid material and which is used for the construction of the laser then this type of laser is known as a solid lasers second one is the liquid if you are using a liquid for the construction of the laser then this type of laser is known as a liquid type laser if you are using a semiconductor material for the construction of laser then this type of the laser is known as a semiconductor laser and if you are considering the gaseous material for the construction of the laser light then this type of the laser is known as a gaseous laser 
For example, for the solid state laser is a ruby laser. For the semiconductor laser, there is a gallium arsenide laser. Laser or for the Cassius laser, the main example is a helium neon laser, and for the dye laser is a tunable dye laser example. So these are the different types of the lasers according to their construction or the material which is used within the construction. Okay, so these are the different types of the laser. So within that we have to discuss one particular type that is a gaseous type laser, and which is nothing but the helium neon laser. So helium and neon these are the main two entities which we are using in a laser and which is in the gaseous form so that is why we are studying the helium neon laser so helium neon laser so we have to introduce first of all what is my the helium neon laser so helium neon laser is a gaseous laser and it is first gaseous laser operated operated in 1961 so and invented by the ali jawan bennett and harriot at bell telephone laboratory in usa that means the invention of this type of laser is did in 1961 first time and it is the first gaseous laser and who invented ali jawan bennett and harriot scientists main scientist is ali jawan and his co-workers are bennett and harriot and they did their work at a bell telephone laboratory in a usa so in this way first gaseous laser is constructed and which is a helium neon laser now the third main point for the helium neon laser so helium neon laser has a monochromatic light and which is in a red color having a wavelength of 6328 angstrom and it is in the visible range because if you are seeing the light emitted by the helium neon laser then it is in red color we are sensible for this color so this range is a visible range and this wavelength falls in the visible range so that is why the output of the helium neon laser is in the visible range next point is that the helium neon laser is a four level diagram system or four level system laser because there are more there are four main steps in which the helium neon laser works for the energy level diagram so that is why this type of laser is called as a four level energy diagram laser or energy system laser but why we are studying the helium neon laser so that is the question so question is that why helium neon laser why not others so first of all the scientists did the work on the solid state laser that is ruby laser but scientists does not get any particular kind of or expected output from the laser that means if we consider the ruby laser ruby laser is a solid state laser and the output of the ruby laser is not in continuous form that means the output of the ruby laser is in the pulses form and the successive pulses having a time interval of 1 to 10 microsecond so we have to find out the the laser having the output there is a continuous pulses but in ruby laser this will not this was not found so that is why the scientists discovered the helium neon laser having a continuous wave output that means in helium neon laser the cycle will get in continuous process and you will get the continuous output so sometimes the helium neon laser is also called as a continuous wave laser so that is why we invented or the scientists invented the helium neon laser so this is all about the introductory part of the laser and what are the different characteristics of the laser why laser is distinguished from the ordinary light and what are the different types of the lasers and within that we are seeing a particular one type of the laser that is helium neon laser which is a gaseous type laser and we have introduced the gaseous type laser that is helium neon laser and also we have seen why we are using the helium neon laser instead of ruby laser as a solid laser now we have to discuss about the what is the working principle and construction for the helium neon laser so first of all we will discuss about the construction of the helium neon laser so the construction of the helium neon laser is divided into three main parts so first part is the laser medium second one is a resonating cavity and third one is a pumping source and the pumping which is used in this type of laser is nothing but the electrical pumping so these are the three different 
points on which the construction of the helium neon laser depends so first of all we will discuss about this diagram okay so this diagram indicates that this is the glass tube so this first part is a laser medium part laser medium means it is nothing but a glass tube consists of a mixture of helium and neon which is in the 10 as to 1 ratio that means if we take one helium atom 10 helium atom and we have to take only one neon atom that means we have to maintain the ratio of helium and neon 10 as to 1 within the this glass tube having a diameter of 1 to 1.5 cm and its length about 30 to 100 cm so this is the dimension of this glass tube so this is a narrow that means less wide tube and large in length so this is the glass tube and having this dimension in which the gaseous form of the helium and neon mixture is filled that is in the 10 as to 1 ratio okay and this tube is connected to the high voltage dc power supply so this part is a pumping source electrical part and the remaining part is the, that is second one part is the resonating cavity so these two mirrors that means if we observe this figure we will get two mirrors that is a mirror m1 and this mirror is a mirror m2 so these two mirrors that is a mirror m1 and mirror m2 forms the optical cavity or simply we call it as a resonating cavity so these are the three main components or three main parts of the construction so we discuss one by one so first of all is a laser medium that means it consists of a glass tube as already I have mentioned filled with a mixture of helium neon in a proportion 10 as to 1 and having dimension like this and also the second part is a resonating cavity so what is the resonating cavity so resonating cavity is formed with the help of these two mirrors that is a mirror M1 and mirror M2 so within that mirror M1 and mirror M2 are the plane mirrors and convex mirrors and the condition is that the mirror M1 is a fully silvered that means the one edge of the mirror is a fully silvered that means it will give the 100% reflection and 0% transmission that means if we consider this mirror it is a fully silvered and it will reflect light 100% and transmit light 0% but what about the second mirror so second mirror M2 is a partially silvered that means it will use nearly 90% reflection and 10% transmission so why this partially silvered because we have to collect output from this part of the tube so that is why this mirror should transmit the some kind of light that means the laser output so that is why this mirror is a partially silvered so with the help of these two mirrors we are able to form the one particular cavity and this cavity is known as the optical cavity or simply we call it as a resonating cavity okay now the condition is that how to place these two mirrors so what is the distance between the two mirrors for, for the distance between the two mirrors the condition is that that means the distance between the two mirrors is given by d is equal to l lambda divided by 2 so where d is the distance between the two mirrors lambda is the wavelength of light and is the integral multiple factor so from that we can state that the distance between the two mirror is equal to the integral multiple of half wavelength of particular laser light so this is the condition for the distance between the two mirrors so and this optical cavity forms a resonating patterns or it will use the output that means it will provide the optical cavity for the photons to move back and forth so this is the second part that is a resonating cavity now the third main part is a pumping source that is an electrical pumping okay so this part is nothing but this high voltage dc power supply so our glass tube is connected to the discharge electrode so one axis is a positive second axis is a negative and this is maintained at a high voltage dc power supply that means it will produce the electron having a high energy and it will give to the 
glass tube so that discharge will occur in the glass tube and next working principle of laser takes place so this is a pumping source that means this dc power supply high voltage power supply acts as a pumping source and this is nothing but the battery that is electrical pumping and with the help of this supply we can produce the high energetic electron and we know that the electrons are flowing from higher potential to lower potential so positive means higher potential negative means lower potential so the flow of electron is like this okay so this electron enter in the glass tube and it will collide with or it will transfer its energy to the helium and neon atom which are present in this tube and helium and neon atom gets its energy but particularly helium atom will absorb immediately its energy because helium is lighter than the neon atom and helium will get excited and in this way this pumping helps in achieve the population inversion condition for the lasing action so this is the main part of this pumping source that means it produces the energetic electron this energetic electron is given to the glass tube and within the glass tube we have a gaseous mixture that is helium neon mixture and this electron gives the energy to the helium atom because it is a lighter atom as compared to neon and helium atom get excited that means if we can write this equation as a, that means helium atom take electron and it will get in excited state okay by using the pumping source and there is a condition of the population inversion so what do you mean by the population inversion population inversion is a very important phenomena for the working principle of any kind of laser that means either solid tunable dye laser liquid type dye laser or gaseous laser so first of all we will discuss about the population inversion as well as the metastable state so there are the two important main parameters for the laser action of any laser so first one is a metastable state and second one is a population inversion so we discuss we will discuss one by one so first one is a metastable state so what do you mean by the metastable state metastable state is nothing but a, it is a energy level but it is a energy level which is distinguished from the any excited state we know that for any excited state the atom stays for 10 to the power minus 8 second this is the normal life term for any energy level which is an excited state that is a 10 to the power minus 8 second that means atoms if absorb some kind of energy it will get excited to higher energy level it stays for 10 to the power minus 8 second and after 10 to the power minus 8 second it will get the excited by emission of a energy of or by emission of a photon but this happens for the excited state which are not metastable state but for the metastable state the condition is different the metastable state takes more time that means 10 to the power minus 3 second or we call it as a millisecond that means if we provide the energy for any atom which is in the ground state it will get excited by using absorption and it will goes in a metastable state but in metastable state the atom will stay for 10 to the power minus 3 second that means this time is much greater than this time so the metastable state is a more stable state as compared to the normal excited state so that is why this stable state is known as metastable state and which is very important in a lasing action of any kind of laser second condition is that population inversion so what do you mean by the population inversion so population inversion is the condition when the number of atoms present in the excited state or higher energy levels are greater than the number of atoms which are present in the ground state energy level so this condition is known as the population inversion so we see by using the diagram that means if we consider two levels this is a first level and this is a second level so in a first level we call it as a e1 and second one is a e2 suppose this level is a excited level and this level is a ground level so these are the two levels that is e1 and e2 so 
the condition for the population inversion is that suppose i am taking these are the different atoms which are in the excited state and the atoms which are in the ground state suppose these atoms are n2 and these atoms are n1 so i take two energy level first energy level is e1 that is ground level second one is e2 that is excited state and i am taking three atoms in the ground level and more than three atoms in the excited level so in the ground level atoms i call n1 and the atoms present in the excited state i call it as n2 so for the population inversion the condition is that n2 should be greater than n1 so this is the population condition that means any for any lasing action that means the excited atoms more than the ground state atoms so this is the population inversion condition and this condition is very important for any lasing action and this will occur by using the pumping source that means the pumping source is responsible to achieve the population inversion of helium atom with respect to its ground state so this is all about the construction of the helium ion laser that means it is divided into three part this one first this one second and this one is a third so these are the three main parts of the construction and two main concept for the lasing action first one is a metastable state and second one is a population inversion now we have to discuss about how helium ion laser works up to this we have introduced laser we have seen types and construction of the helium ion laser now we have to discuss about the how it works that means helium ion laser how you will get the output that is in red color form and having the wavelength of 6 328 angstrom and which is in the visible region now the working principle of helium ion laser and its corresponding energy level diagram okay so in construction part we have seen three main parts first one is this lasing medium second one is optical cavity and third one is a high voltage dc power supply so these are the three main elements which helps to occur the lasing action okay so now how it works by using its energy level diagram so first of all here is a high voltage dc power supply that means it is a high voltage power supply it acts as a pumping source and it will produce the high energy electrons and these electrons are given to the this glass tube so the glass tube consists of helium and neon mixture which is in the gaseous form and we know that which is in the pro pro proportion that is a 10 as to 1 that means if you are taking 10 helium atoms then there is a only one neon atom okay so this is the proportion of helium and neon atoms so this electron gives its energy to the helium neon but the only helium atom will get in its excited state that means if we consider the energy level diagram that means this is a ground state of the helium then after collision of the high energetic electron with the helium atom helium atom will take electron energy and it will get into its excited states okay so the helium atom consists of three main state that is 3s 2s and 1s so within that 3s and 2s are the metastable state and 1s is the normal state so these are the two metastable state for the 2s states and this is the ground state for the helium atom okay so after absorbing the energy from the electron it will get excited to the state that is a 2 3s1 and second is a 2 1s0 that means this transition occurs due to the electron collision okay that means your helium atom goes in its excited state but why only helium atom not neon atom because the proportion of the helium is more as compared to neon atom and the most important thing is that helium is lighter as compared to neon atom because the mass of the neon atom is 4 to 5 times larger than the helium atoms so that is why helium atom easily get 
acquire that energy from the electron and it will get dx right as compared to neon atom that means here this high voltage dc power supply acts as a pumping source and which is the electrical pumping because it is a battery which is the electrical battery and it will help to excite helium atom and this helium atom after help to excite the neon atom okay so up to this okay that means the helium atom which will get excited due to the electron collision and it will get in a excited state that is in the metastable state okay now due to this electron there is a continuous discharge in the tube okay and now the condition is that the metastable state of the helium and the higher energy metastable state of the neon atoms are in the equivalent range that means having in a equivalent range so that is why we are using here helium with the neon so that is why we are taking the combination of helium with the neon because its excited state are in equivalent range okay so now up to this after that the excited helium atoms will collide with the neon atoms which are present in this discharge tube or in this glass tube and it will transfer its energy to the neon atom and neon atom will get excited from its ground state to its excited state that is a two excited state that is a metastable state one is a 2s and another one is a 3s that means your neon atom will get excited due to the helium atom that means helium will help to excite the neon atom to its metastable state or higher state that means here is a collision phenomena in between excited helium and neon atom okay so this will explain with the help of these equations that means helium atom which is present in this tube it will take electron from this high voltage dc source and it will get in excited state that is helium star and after that this helium atom will transfer its energy by using the collision with the neon atom which is in the ground state and neon atom will get excited to its metastable state and after that the helium atom will get the excited because he gave its energy to the neon atom so up to this there is a main role of the helium atom for the excitation of the neon atom after that there is no any major role of the helium atom in the lasing action the mainly one element or we call it as a active element or lasing element for the lasing action is only neon okay so up to this excitation up to the excitation of neon atom the role of the helium is very important okay so this is up to the excitation of the neon atom now this power supply is continuously on and it will produce continuously high energy kinetic electron that is why you will get here discharge in the tubes and this process will get continue and continue and after that there is a more population in the excited state of the neon atom and due to the more population in the excited state of the neon atom there is a very easy to achieve the population inversion of neon atom excited state that is a metastable state to its lower state that is a lower states are 2p and 3p so these are the two main lower state for the neon atom and these are the two excited state so due to discharge continuous discharge there is a population inversion condition that means there is a population inversion in between 3 years 2 years and 3p 2p states and after achieving population inversion one of the photon get released from this state and it will get de excited to be the, to the 2p state having a wavelength 6328 angstrom and which is in the red color okay and this is occurs spontaneously that means by using a spontaneous emission and there is a emission of photon having this type of energy and color now this photon will get in motion in two from way 
that means in between mirror m1 and m2 this photon moves to fro way in between m1 and m2 because m1 and m2 are the mirrors and we know that there is a reflection of the light from the mirrors so this photon moved to and fro and it stimulate the excited atom of the neon which are present in the meta stable state to get de excited to its lower state that is 2p and 3p so it is a stimulated emission okay that means this one photon move to and fro and it will stimulate the neon excited atom to get de excited to its lower state and it will emit again photon due to de excitation process so from 3s to 3p state there is a emission of one photon having a wavelength 3.39 micrometer and which is in the ir region and second transition is from 2s to 2p and this transition emits the photon having a wavelength of 1.15 micrometer which is also in ir region and the another photon is emitted from 3s to 2p having same wavelength that is a 6328 angstrom which is a coherent because it is a stimulated emission and we know that in a stimulated emission there is a multiplication of photon that means if we give if we absorb one photon for the transition then it will give two photons if there are two photons then it will give four photons that means due to stimulated emission there is a multiplication of photon so here you will get two photons and after that this process will continue you will get the corresponding continuous form of the photons and this is a main lasing action for the helium neon laser having red color and having wavelength 6328 angstrom so we are not interested in this two emission that is this emission are in the ir region and just we are interested in the emission in the, in the red color region and which is for helium neon laser so here we ignore the two emissions and we just consider the only one transition which is very important transition for helium neon lasing action from 3s to 2p level so up to this lasing action of the helium neon laser will complete or completed so after that this is the excited state of the neon atom now after achieving the population inversion in between 2p and 1s state so 2p is a normal excited state 1s is a meta stable state so here is a population of this 2p state is more as compared to this state due to transition this different transitions so after achieving population inversion these atoms will get de excited to 1s state by using a spontaneous emission and it will again emit a photon and which is a radiative transition that is why so this is the transition from 2p to 1s state and which is a spontaneous now after that this level is a populated as compared to ground state of the neon atom now this atom will get de excited but this is a non radiative transition that means this transition is occur without emitting any kind of photon because this is a meta stable state of the neon atom and we know that in a meta stable state there is a no lasing action so there is a no spontaneous emission or stimulated emission so it will get de excited to its ground state by using diffusion to the walls that means these atoms will transfer its energy to walls of the this discharge tube and then it will get de excited so in this way you will get the all atoms in the ground state of the neon and this process will continue occur due to continuous discharge in the tube due to continuous production of high energetic electron by using high voltage dc power supply that is why this type of laser that is a helium neon laser is called as a continuous wave laser and which is used for the different applications so this kind of laser is worked in a four level energy systems so why helium neon laser is a four level energy system the question arises because it work in four main step first step is that 
there is the excitation of helium atom due to high energetic electron which is produced due to dc power supply and this electron will helps to excite helium atom to its higher energy levels and this helium atoms give its energy by collision to the neon atoms which is in the ground state so there is excitation of neon atom due to excited helium atoms due to collision of the excited helium atoms to the neon atoms so after achieving the population inversion you will get the excitation from these two levels to its lower states and you will get the corresponding lasing action for the helium neon laser so this is the second step that means first step is excitation of helium second is the lasing action and third step is that there is a transition from 2p to 1s level which is a spontaneous transition and which is a radiative transition and last step is that the transition of atoms that is the neon atoms from its 1s state to the ground state and which is a non radiative transition and this transition occurs due to diffusion towards that means the atoms which are present in a 1s states will give its energy to this glass tube by diffusion process and then after that it will get de excited to its ground state so this is a four main step for the working of helium neon laser by using a energy diagram so that is why this laser that is helium neon laser is called as four level energy system so this is all about the working principle of helium neon lasers so just only we summarize that there is a dc power supply which produce high energetic electrons so due to high energetic electron there is a discharge in the tube and due to discharge helium atom get excited and the excited helium atoms give its energy to the neon atoms the neon atom will get excited to its a higher energy level and after that the population condition is achieved there is a de excitation of neon atoms to its corresponding lower states and due to spontaneous emission there is a one photon emission and this photon stimulate the other excited neon atoms to de excite and you will get the corresponding lasing action and after that there is a transition from 2p to 1s state and 1s to ground state so this is the whole process of the working principle of helium neon laser and it is very easy to understand so this is all about the working principle and energy level diagram now what are the merits and demerits of the helium neon laser so first of all merits so what are the different merits first one is a it will work in a continuous mode that means its operation is in the continuous mode as already we have discussed the helium neon laser is also called as a continuous wave laser because it will give continuous output second one is a highly monochromatic we know that the helium neon laser is highly monochromatic highly directional highly intense and it will give unidirectional output so that is why it is used in different applications third one is a no cooling arrangement that means for the working principle of helium neon laser we does not require any external cooling arrangement like in a solid state laser that is as compared to ruby laser there is no any requirement of the external cooling arrangement next one is a fourth easy in a construction and reliable in a operation that means this type of laser is very easy in a construction as compared to solid lasers and which is a very reliable in its operation last one that is the fifth one is a required electrical pumping we know that for the discharge we required a pumping and we know that the different types of pumping like optical pumping electrical pumping in helium neon laser we are using electrical pumping and which is advantageous as compared to ruby laser so these all are the merits or advantages for a solid state laser or ruby laser of helium neon laser now there are some demerits or disadvantages the only one disadvantage is that it will gives low power output that means it is used for the low power applications and its output power is in the milliwatt so which is very less so that is why this is a disadvantage for the helium neon lasers so this is all about the merits and demerits of the helium neon laser now what are the different applications because helium neon lasers has 
more merits as compared to demerits so it is used in wide applications so first one is a holograms so what is a hologram hologram is actually technique in which we are able to capture 3d images of 3d objects by using lasers so in hologram techniques helium neon laser is used to, to capture the 3d images second application is the communications in generally optical communication in optical communication we need a corresponding optical light and the light which is given by the helium neon laser is used for the communication purpose generally in military defense in radar so this is used in a communication third one is a distance measurement that is a large distance measurement so helium neon laser is used for the measurement of large distances suppose in military or in a, uh, defense if we want to uh, find out the target which is at a very large distance then we can emit the laser light at a particular point or at a particular specification specific location and if the light will get reflected back from the target then we are able to detect that target also and we are able to detect the distance between us and target so in this way the laser is used to measure the large distance measurement next one is the fourth application in barcode reading we know that in supermarkets there are number of products and on the products there is a barcode barcode is stacked and this barcode is read with the help of laser which is in a generally red color that is your helium neon lasers so by using helium neon laser we are able to read the barcode and you will get the corresponding whole information about the product that is a price its specification manufacturing all the details quantities which are available in the supermarket you will get with the help of the laser now fifth one is the in a target aiming devices that means in a defense military purpose in a radar the helium neon laser is used that means in order to uh, detect the target or we have to focus on to the target like uh, with the help of guns then at that time helium neon laser is also used now the last last application is that in experimental lab we know that we will perform many experiment or we have perform we have to perform many experiment in a laboratory for the college purposes for the research laboratory or for number of lab, experimental labs then we have to use the laser and the particular type of laser is used for the experimental laboratory that is your helium neon laser so this is the last application of the helium neon lasers so because of many of advantages there are different applications of the helium neon laser so in this way we have completed the laser and within that particularly helium neon laser which is a gaseous type laser we have seen what is a laser now what are the different characteristics what are the different types and within that generally we have seen one type that is a helium neon type in detail with its introduction its construction with the diagram and its working with the energy level diagram also we have seen merits demerits and application of the helium neon laser so this is all about the helium neon laser